Today, I want to share with you 10 small things that you can do before 2022 that can improve your life. And there's still time before this year ends, so let's end it on a high note and prepare to start 2022 well. And as we get started, I want to say a big thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me on today's video. We'll talk about them in a bit, but now let's get started with the first thing that you should do before 2022, and that's to do a digital clean out. And I don't know about you, but personally, I have no issues with decluttering my physical space, but sometimes I kind of can tend to let clutter build up in my digital space. I have tons of pictures on my phone that I haven't been through, and the same thing goes for my computer where there are quite a few files that definitely need to be deleted. And so a great way to really start off the new year well is to set ourselves up for success in our digital space by taking time now to go through and to declutter and to delete unnecessary files and photos and just the general data on our computers that we don't need. Not only does this increase our storage space and makes files easier to find, but also when we clear out our digital space, what that does is it creates an increased ability for us to focus on the work at hand. So if, like me, you work on your phone or your computer a lot, this can be a great way to increase your productivity naturally just by decreasing distractions. So this one is definitely on my list of things that I want to do before 2022, and I'd encourage you to do it as well. Okay, and the next, number two, is to give back. Pick a cause or an organization that's important to you and donate your time or money to it. Giving and practicing generosity really helps us to look outside of ourselves, to get out of our own minds and to focus on how we can contribute and impact the lives of others. And so especially at this time of year, I love picking an organization, a charity, or even a local family who might be in need and coming alongside them and supporting them either with your time, your donations, or whatever resources you may have. There really is something about giving and being generous that not only blesses the other person, but blesses us as well. All right, and then the third thing that you can do before the new year is to meet someone new. And I really do think that with everything that's gone on in the world in the past couple of years, we've become more isolated than ever. But the problem is we as humans are designed for connection. We're not meant to live in isolation. And so if you've been struggling with feeling isolated or disconnected, I'd really encourage you to try to meet someone new in the next couple of weeks. And no, you won't instantly become best friends with them. Those types of close relationships tend to develop over time. But just begin initiating those conversations and really putting yourself out there and in a position where you actually can meet new people. And I get it, it can be scary, it can be awkward, kind of meeting someone new always is a little bit. But persevere, stick with it, and you might end up with some amazing relationships as a result. And then number four is to start going to the gym now. I find fitness goals are some of the most common New Year's resolutions. And if you're considering making a fitness related goal your New Year's resolution, then I'd encourage you to start now with it. It's still December, yes, but the new year isn't some kind of magical day where if you set a goal on that day, then it's going to come to fruition any better than a goal that you set today. So if you're wanting to be more active or to become more physically fit, why not set a goal related to that today and then just go to the gym and start working out? The way that we create habits and change our lifestyle is by repeating the same action over and over and over again with consistency. So why not start working on that consistency now? Set a goal and then start putting going into the gym or working out into your schedule on a regular basis. And then next five is to schedule time alone. Especially at this time of year, we tend to spend a lot of time with family, with friends, and there are a lot of different social events and activities that we're kind of expected to attend. And so if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed looking at your schedule and seeing all that you have going on, or even you're just feeling a little stressed out by maybe too much time around others, I'd really encourage you to carve out some alone time for yourself. Whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, to some extent, all of us need time alone to really be able to rest and to recharge. 
much. We can't be on 24 seven, and it's important that we recognize that and make space and time in our schedules for us just to be alone. And so whether you want to spend time going for a walk, reading, journaling, maybe baking something fun, there are a lot of different things that you can do to really recharge. But in the midst of all that you might have going on, I'd really encourage you just to take some time for yourself to rest and to recharge. Okay, and this next one is such a good one and I'm excited to get into it. But before we do, I want to share with you guys a bit about today's sponsor, Skillshare. And Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes that can help you to deepen your existing passions, to explore new skills, and to get lost in creativity. And they have classes on so many different interesting topics like photography, productivity, personal development, business, all kinds of different art forms, and so much more. And recently, I've been watching the class Video for Instagram, how to tell an engaging story in less than a minute. It's taught by Halise Narvez, and I love her perspective that inspiration is everywhere, and it's really been pushing me to think outside of the box when it comes to kind of my videography and just video making skills. And what's cool about Skillshare is that it's really curated for learning. So there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes that you can really follow your creativity wherever it takes you. And Skillshare's entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. So if you're one of my international crew, they may now have subtitles for you. And so if you're ready to unleash your creativity and to learn in a really fun and engaging way, I definitely recommend checking out Skillshare. And for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description box below, Skillshare is kindly offering a one month free trial of their platform. So do that now and start exploring your creativity today. Let's get back to our list now though and talk about number six, and that's to declutter your wardrobe. And let me be clear on this one, I'm not talking about getting out everything that you own and completely decluttering your wardrobe. Honestly, at this time of year, that might be a lot to ask. But what I'd recommend is just going through your closet, looking at what you have, and just ask yourself, are there any items that in 2021 you didn't wear? I feel like for most of us, there's probably an item or two, or maybe a lot more than that, that fit that description. And I think that as the year comes to a close, it's a great time to just look back at what did you wear and what didn't you wear. And then for those items that you didn't wear, maybe consider moving on from them. Try selling or donating those items so that as you go into the new year, you can do so without the excess. And something you can do if you want to take this to the next level or maybe you already have a more minimal wardrobe is not just to ask have I worn this in the past year, but to ask have I worn it at least five times in the past year. That's an easy way to kind of up the ante and to encourage you not just to wear the items that you have, but to wear regularly the items that you have so that you're getting the most possible value from those items. Okay, and the number seven is to be present with people. I think that one of the most incredible things about this season is that it naturally gives us a space and an opportunity to draw closer to our loved ones, our friends, our family. And so in the midst of all that you have going on, don't forget to take time to be present and to really engage and to engage deeply with others. I think sometimes we can get so caught up thinking about what's next that even when we're in the moment, we're not actually being present with the people around us. Our minds are focused on a million other things and we're distracted. And so my encouragement to you is just to put down your phone, save those to-dos and other tasks for later. Stop thinking about what's next. Instead, take in the moment and then dive into relationships. Have those amazing conversations and make those memories that are going to last a lifetime. And then number eight is to create a gratitude list, or as I like to call it, a thankfulness list. And it's 2021 right now, so try writing out 21 things that you're grateful for from this past year. And if inspiration is a plenty, just keep going. And it's a great time just to be able to look back at 
all the amazing things that you have been blessed with and the things that have maybe happened in the past year. I think our brains can naturally tend to dwell on the negatives sometimes and to think about the things that we don't have, but when we really stop to think about it, there are so many things that we have to be thankful for, whether that's health, a place over our heads, friends and family surrounding us, and the list goes on. So I'd encourage you just to really take some time to dwell on the positives, the small things, the big things, and everything in between. And I really think that that's something that can help change our perspectives and really just leave us in a brighter, more cheerful, and just positive mood. Then kind of bouncing off that, number nine is to take some time for reflection. And it's so important to every once in a while, take some time for self-assessment. And I feel like especially as the year comes to close, it's the perfect time for that. So maybe you want to journal or you want to go on a walk and just think about where you are and how far you've come. Ask yourself, how was your year? What were the things that brought you joy? What were the struggles that you had? What's something that you loved this year that you want to repeat again next year? Or what's something that you want to change going into the new year? Ask yourself those questions and don't be afraid to really dig deep with them. And then finally, number 10 is to set your priorities. What do you want to focus on going into the new year? In as much as yes, we can start a new habit on any given day, I think the new year really does create a great opportunity and a time for us to really think about what do I want my life to look like going forward and what changes or shifts do I need to make in my life to get to that place. And so as you're taking time for reflection or just going about your daily life, I'd really encourage you to think through what are your priorities and are there any that you want to shift around as you go into the new year? And sometimes it really is the smallest changes that have the biggest impact. This past year, I really wanted to commit to being more physically fit. And so rather than set the goal of, okay, I'm going to go to the gym five times a week and I'm going to work out for an hour a day, which going from zero to that would have been unachievable for me, or at least probably unsustainable. I just set the goal of, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to show up three times a week and I'm going to work out for at least 15 minutes. Now a year later, I'm not this perfect model of physical fitness, but I really have taken some huge strides this year towards really making my health a priority. And it really all starts with that decision to make something a priority and then setting small, achievable goals to get there. All right, well, that's it. Those are 10 things that you can do before 2022 to improve your life. And I really hope this video gives you some ideas or inspiration on how we can really finish this year well. Now, I'd love to know though, what's one thing that you're wanting to do before 2022? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. And don't forget that if you want to check out Skillshare today, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description box below can get their first one month of Skillshare for free. That's everything I've got for you in today's video, but as always, don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already, and subscribe for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one.